welcome. How exciting. It is your confirmation morning. We are going to give you a video today for your rehearsal so that you have some sense of what to expect. When you enter the building, make sure that you are moving as a family. We ask that you not be moving throughout the space, talking to other families. You'll be given a, a map in this email that also shows where your family pod will be seated. Please use this map as a way to determine where your family of five plus the student can sit. You'll notice on the end of the pews that we have the seating name and number. Your number will be determined at the um, pizza prayer and prep or sub super prep and spirit event on May 14th where they will be randomly selected by students. So when you get to your um, pew, you will notice that we will have bulletins and an affirmation of baptism uh, order of worship on your pew along with the flower. For Northside students, this is obviously, this will be chairs, they'll be spread out similarly. Please place the um, flower on the lapel of the student um, immediately when you get to the space. It's usually put on the left hand side. We ask that you be in your pew as a family 15 minutes prior to the worship service, but not earlier as we're trying to make sure that we keep as safely distanced as possible. So at this point, Pastor Mary will lead us through what to expect. We will be having a regular worship service starting with song and then a prayer and then everybody will be seated for the um, sermon and the lesson. It's going to be a short one, don't worry. <laughs> and at the end of the sermon, I will say, confirmands, please stand. And then just the confirmation students will stand as we go through the rite of um, affirmation of baptism. It will begin with a, a welcoming words, and then we will go into the re, um, to some questions that we will be asking the confirmants to answer together. I will ask, do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? And the confirmants respond, I renounce them. Great. Loud and together. Loud and together. Do you renounce the powers of the world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. At this point, we're going to go into the creed. Have this memorized. You will not be looking at your sheets. You will not be looking at your sheets as you answer this. So practice with this recording or however is best for you. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And we continue, you have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in baptism? To live among God's faithful people, to hear his word and share in his supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of our Lord Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. 
Each confirmation student will individually answer this question with the words, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. Practice those. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. We will start in the right corner with this confirmation student. <laughs> and then we'll go all the way back, and then we'll come forward with confirmation students, and then we'll start here and go back, and then from the back, forward. So the question is, do you strive for justice and peace in all the earth? I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. Then we get to ask your parents the same thing. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for these young people in their life in Christ? And they will respond. We do, do and, and we, we ask God, God to help and guide us. Then we get to pray, and the confidants may be seated. At this point, we will continue with the laying on of hands of individuals. When you come into the sanctuary and you find your spot, your seating spot, which once again, students will actually be pulling or we've got a wheel that they're gonna be spinning to figure out where your seating is going to be. And I should point out that the good thing is, is uh, we're actually coming to you this year instead of everybody being up front. So it won't be as big an issue about where you're placed in the sanctuary. But when you come in, you'll see that you have your name. If your name is on the interior aisle, please have your student sit closest to the sign, so on this inside portion, with the rest of the family sitting close to the student. If your student's name is on the outside aisle, you'll want to have your student sitting closest to the sign so the one closest to the outside aisle with the rest of the family over to that side. When we do this, we're able to ensure that our social distancing is best, but also that we have an easy transfer of the student out into the space for the laying of hands with family following behind. I'll be inviting out the confirmand and while they're coming, the verse will be read. Student A, student, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. John three sixteen. Family gathers round and lays hand on that, on that student, and the pastor will pray. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in this student the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience in suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. And after everlasting life, the student will say, Amen. Amen. So I'll say that again. Bring him to everlasting life. Amen. And then the people will go back into their seats and hand the certificate to the congregation. Amen. So in the center aisle here, the student will step out. I'll go like this and invite the student to come out. And then the family will gather behind the student. And uh, Student A student. And to be renewed in the spirit of your minds. Ephesians 4 verse 23. And then I'll put my hand up in a form of prayer and blessing, and the family will be invited to do that same thing with the, in, with, the, with the confirmant. And I'll say a prayer. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in this student the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving, give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. And the student says, Amen. Yep, remember that. Right after the prayer, the student says, Amen. And I will pass the certificate on to the student, and then they be, are seated back into the pew again, or the chairs. So at the end, we're just going to invite you to lead um, in, and we'll be ushering you out as families.
Congratulations. In the past, we've had a reception line that students have when they um, are finished thanking guests to come. This year, we're asking, go ahead and take your celebration outside, take pictures out there, but we ask that you not take photos in the building or um, clump together with other families and other people. Thanks so much. We appreciate your patience. We know that this year has been challenging, but we're all doing our best. And, um, and then we are so, so happy for you.